Welcome. We're on the red couch with Lori Mishus, a multiple cancer survivor who has worked as a registered investment advisor with Valix since 1997. Lori left her position as a financial advisor for a year to co-found Team Tony Foundation with her good friend and fellow brain cancer survivor, Tony McAcheron. The mission of Team Tony is to pair a cancer survivor with a cancer fighter so those diagnosed with cancer get the support they need. Their vision is to become the preeminent one-on-one -on -one cancer support organization on Florida's Sun Coast. Lori has overcome multiple cancer diagnoses, 20 surgeries, and the paralysis of her left leg. Her passion is to use her life experience to help others. Lori says, life's challenges aren't meant to paralyze you. They're meant to help you discover who you are and what you're made of. Lori, I am so thrilled to have you on the red couch. Well, I'm humbled and honored to be here. Thanks, Rachel. When we first met many months ago, you had been diagnosed with a rare form of thyroid cancer mm -hmm. and had had radiation mm -hmm. that wasn't successful. Correct. So you were ready to try something new. Right, right. And you did a series of infusions, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you just got the results back, and you emailed them to me. Mm -hmm. And some of them sounded pretty good, mm -hmm. and some of them sounded not quite as good. Right. right. And your attitude was still amazing. We have one shot here, and, and I just, I'm not going to let anything on the outside determine my happiness on the inside. So um, I just said, you know, it is what it is, and we'll move forward. So uh, life is still great, regardless of what's going on outside. So. You know, I talk to so many women, and I usually try to talk to them beforehand, and you and mm -hmm. I had lunch, mm -hmm. and we we're talking about really serious matters, mm -hmm. yeah. very serious subject matter. Mm hmm and you and I laughed more than anyone I've ever interviewed. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> we had a good time. We had a good time. And mm. the, I think it's really because of you and who you are and your attitude. I think it, I think it was the uh, dynamics between the two of us, actually. Well, thank you. Yeah. Now, you started having these difficult health issues when you were young, 14 mm -hmm. or 15. Mm -hmm. Correct. And then it just became like a cascade of... Yeah, just different, you know, chal medical challenges uh, to to deal with. Um, but I never wanted that to be who I am. Um, it was uh, just like the diagnosis of cancer. Um, you may have cancer, but it's not who you are. You you have you're a mom or a wife, a sister, brother, a friend, um, and that's really what's most important. You just can't let it define your being, and and that and that often happens because you know you're you're given a diagnosis that can. Um, turn your life upside down, and you have to make that decision not to let that happen. Um, so it, it takes some work, but you, you know, you get through it. You know, some people have like one defining moment, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and, and most people only have one or two surgeries. You've had to re-inspire yourself yeah. over and over again. Yeah. So do you get discouraged? I never have. I'm not sure why. I just, I never have. Um, and matter of fact, I, I've, you know, a lot of people take the challenges and say, um, you know, life's awful. And I feel like we should feel the pain, mm -hmm. accept it, learn from it, and, and allow that to help us grow. And, you know, so many people push down pain. And pain can be a diagnosis of cancer, a you know, breakup of a relation, whatever that looks like. And we truly grow when we don't do that, when we feel it and accept it, move on and, and, you know, kind of say, hey, what am I made of? You know, I'm a better person because of this. And um, then when challenges do come, and they're going to, you yeah. know, we can't, they're, they're not, you know, you can't avoid them, they're going to come. You're better able, you're more equipped to deal with them because you can say, I've done this before. I, I know what it takes to get through. So that's what I've, you know, that's the kind of philosophy I've taken over. Um, and I'm not going to say, you know, when you're in the hospital and you get the diagnosis, you know, they basically say you're, your leg is paralyzed. We don't know whether you're ever going to walk again. Did I say, well, this kind of sucks, you know? Yeah, but I, I never, I said, all right, well, I'm going to do everything I can to walk again. I visualized myself walk, and, and it happened. But it, even if I hadn't have walked again, mm -hmm. it was going to be okay. Life yeah. is still going to be good. You so. said, even if I have to be in a wheelchair mm -hmm. for the rest of my life, I'm still alive. I'm alive. Life is good. You can, you can define yourself in different ways. 
you know, you don't have to be this, you know, two arms, two legs working and everything else. You know, it, it, you know, you'll find happiness if you choose to find happiness. Will you tell the story about when you woke up from that surgery? And it was an abdominal surgery, right? Correct, yeah. And you woke up and you thought, you thought it was just the anesthesia, why your leg wasn't moving? Right, right. Um, yeah, and, and I, I, was, I was laying there and I thought, well, that's weird. I need, to, I need to get up and move. And they encourage you to get up and sit in a right. chair afterwards anyway. So I said to the nurse, you know, everybody left, all, you know, family, friends left. And I said, I, I just need to get up and, and walk around a little bit because I can't, I can't feel or move my left leg. And when she came in, she, you know, she had to help me move my leg around because I, I couldn't do it. And I got up on my, um, we got, were at the end of the bed, and she's kind of got her arm around me. And I went to, I stepped with my right leg, and then I went to step with my left, and I just collapsed. And her eyes were, you know, as big as oranges. And I just said, you know, I can't, I can't feel my leg. Something's wrong. And the next morning, just doctor, we just got bombarded by doctors, and, and uh, they thought maybe I had a stroke. So I went for a CAT mm -hmm. scan. And then uh, came back. They did not It's called an EMG study. That's what you, you know determines whether your nerves are working in your leg. And Dr. Nagroski, who's uh, just a tremendous um, physician here in town, was doing the EMG, and he said, "There's not, you know, there's no, no nothing going on there." And I, I looked at him and I said, "Am I ever going to walk again?" And he said, "I don't know." And I looked over. My husband just, you know, he was over in the corner, crying. And I said, "At that point." I am going to walk. You know, you don't know, he said, you don't know me very well. I am going to walk. Um, but it was just that, wow, okay, this isn't what we were expecting. So my first phone call when I got home was to a physical therapy place. I said, I need to come in you know, like tomorrow, and I need to do what I got to do um, to walk again. So, um, so that was kind of, that, that was what happened. That was my 19th surgery um, back in, uh, that was October of 08. So. Wow. Now, <clears throat> when you woke up, when you the second day and you realize this leg is not working mm -hmm. and that really wasn't supposed to happen and the surgeon came in and I'm sure he was very upset and you said that you yeah I, I he was sitting on my right and I just I put my 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 dad was there and my my husband and I put my hand on the shoulder and I said it's all you know I don't want you to worry it's all going to be okay because you said that to the surgeon yeah yeah and because I, I I knew he has four children I knew how mortified he must have been. He, he had gone to that surgery to help me, and I knew his intention was to help me, not to hurt me. Stuff happens in life, and you don't, you know, you just deal with it. So um, I felt empathy for him, for what he must have been going through at that point in time, and I knew that if together we were working through this, it was going to be a better outcome. Because if I was angry or mad or, you know, ticked off at him, I wasn't going to be using my time and energy to be healing and you know learning how to walk again. So they're dear friends today and just adore him. And we've come, I think because of the way that we dealt with that, we, the outcome was much greater than it could have been if we were, you know, if I was mad or, I will say, here's a funny story. He runs by the house all the time. And when I was in a wheelchair and my office is right where I can see people running by, and I did have vision, like, good Lori was over here going, we're going to get through this. And then evil Lori's like, I wish I could get out there and trip him when he goes by and then he'd <laughs> fall and hit his head, you know. But um, we, we got through it. You know, we, we, we surely did. It took a long time, but we, you know, we, uh, we overcame, both of us. I mean, I don't know if it's because I was raised Jewish and have had a, a lot of good training in blaming others, but I would have a hard time not blaming someone or even, even just with the, forget even about the leg, just the... <clears throat> multiple diagnoses, multiple surgeries. Mm -hmm. It's pretty hard when you're in that situation not, not to say, this has got to be somebody's fault. You know, whose fault is this? Who can I blame? And not take responsibility. And that's, that's never what you've done. No, I, that doesn't register with me, actually. So, um, but I can see how people, you know, everybody's different. I can see how people, you know, would think that way. And, and there's no right or wrong. It's just the way that people think. So, um, and I found that uh, life is easier for me when I just say it is what it is, and we're going to get through it. So, um, it's remarkable. It's really remarkable to me, and and I keep I keep going back to I can't imagine ha living through five surgeries, mm -hmm. let alone twenty, and still having a good attitude and mm -hmm. still being positive and actually being grateful. You had said that after that surgery, when you had to learn how to walk again. Your boss challenged you to a 5K. Yeah. So here you are not walking, 
and someone's challenging you to a 5K and you said, game on. That's right. <laughs> game on. I did.